I'm going to read two verses of Scripture. Hebrews chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. So he's telling these Hebrew believers that God spoke to their forefathers different times and different ways. Okay? Now we know God used a lot, a lot of different prophets. And we know that God spoke to Moses directly out of the burning bush. Okay? We know that God spoke to Abraham and Jesus appeared to him and talked with him. Okay, so many different ways that God had spoken to the fathers in times past. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. And I want to use this tonight on the help of the Lord. I want to preach a message entitled, Letting God Talk, or Let God Talk. You need to let God talk. Yes. Let's go ahead and look to him in prayer and ask his blessing tonight. Reverend Coker, will you pray, please? Father, we come before you. In Jesus' name, we thank you for your goodness tonight. Father, let a fresh unction again rest upon Pastor Pope. Speak to hearts, God, and accomplish your will in this service tonight. Amen. 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 Thank God for his plan for our lives. Oh, amen. He has a plan for each and every one of us. I'm going to say some things about my personal life tonight, because I'm not trying to just talk about myself. I know more about myself than I do you. <laughs> oh, wow. okay. I think I've shared before that I was born premature, seven months. Oh, wow. And they didn't think I was going to live, and my mother was Catholic, and they told her you need to call for your priest to come and perform the last rites because this baby's not going to make it. And so they did that. And while they were doing that, my dad went off into a, another room that was empty, got down on his knees, and prayed, and said, God, if you let my son live, I will do right, and I will follow you. Well, God let me live, obviously. Obviously. Okay. Okay. He answered that prayer, and then later on in my dad's life, he got saved, thank God. Okay, but I, I always kind of thought that God had a plan for my life, though I was not saved. And God has a plan for everyone's life. Yeah. We're not trying to uh, be puffed up or exalt ourselves or anything like that. God has a plan yes, for every life. Amen. Okay? Amen. God, I, I always knew that God had a plan for my life. I didn't know that God wanted me to be a, a preacher and a pastor, but I knew that there was a reason that God let me live. Yes. He could have taken me and that would have been yeah. glorious. Okay, but he didn't. There was a reason that he let me live. There's a reason that he let all of us live. We're all here for a reason. Okay. And believe it or not, growing up, I was a very talkative child. <laughs> Probably should have known me that God had me called to preach. <laughs> very talkative, and I was very loud. And uh, many times my mother would tell me. And they'd call me by my middle name. They would say, Michael, be quiet. You don't have to talk so loud. I'm right here. But I was a little boy that was excited. You know how that goes. Oh, yes. Yes. Every word out of the mouth is loud, and they're yelling, and let it dance over here, and running around. And, <laughs> and uh, I remember being in school, and it was only at home, but at school. You know, I would do pretty decent with my grades. Uh, I had to get good grades if I wanted to, if I liked the subject. Oh, if you want. <laughs> That's true. But I, they had this thing, I don't even know what they call it now, but they called it citizenship back then. And you got your marks for citizenship. And I always had negative marks on talking because I was talking too much. <laughs> talking too much in class, talking too loud. Okay, And I remember... Uh, also, you know, being at home, 
uh, and, and I'm still kind of this way, and my brothers and sisters would say, like, let somebody else talk. Stop doing all the talking, let somebody else talk. I still have a problem with that sometimes. My wife would tell you, I gotta let somebody else talk. <laughs> a little fellowship, and I'm wanting to do all the talking. Okay, or we're having a conversation, and I'm the one doing all the conversing. Okay, well, you know what, brother and sister, we need to let God talk. Amen. Amen. Because God is trying to talk to each and every one of us, He's trying to talk to all people. He always has been. Okay, from the very beginning, we can see Him. In the Garden of Eden, what did he do? He went and he began to call out to Adam after Adam had sinned. He said, Adam, where art thou? Trying to talk to Adam. He wanted to have a conversation with him. Amen? Though the man was wrong, God wanted to commune with him. And God, thank God, God wants to commune with all people. Communing isn't just, we call it communion. But it's not uh, eating a little wafer and drinking some grape juice. That's just a communing is communication. God wants to communicate with all people. And God wants to let them know about his son Jesus and what he has done for them. But we need to let God talk. Amen. We need to let God, you know, instead of always have, having to do the speaking and, and, and wanting God to hear what we have to say and, and thank God that God wants to hear it. He will answer our prayer. And he hears our petitions. But sometimes, brother and sister, we need to be quiet. And we need to let God talk to us. You know, there are people that, that are so busy in life that they, they have no quiet time. And they never spend time allowing God to calm their spirit and their mind. Okay, we need, it's important that we make time for that. And I like... I like to listen to things. There are things that I like to listen to, and yeah. music that I like, and, and uh, these things, these kind of things, and they can be a blessing. And we need to have knowledge of what's going on in the world in which we live. And, and uh, there's a lot of things that, that that maybe have some some good good benefit. But brother and sister, there's no greater benefit than you and I hearing from Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we need to turn the music off. Sometimes. We need to put the phone down. Okay? Sometimes we just need to spend some time quietly with the Lord and allow the Lord to begin to talk to us and speak to our hearts and begin to guide us and direct us in what He wants us to do in our lives. You know, we pray about things, but we don't give God the space and the time to answer what we have prayed about. God, what do I do about this? God, I know that I need to work on this in my life. God, how do I change this in my life? I mean, that's wonderful that we ask, and that's wonderful that we seek God with these things, brother and sister. But thank God, uh, we can give God the time and the, and the quietness to let God answer and begin to speak to our hearts. Yeah, yeah. We need to let God talk. You know, when God talks, things change. We have so many examples in the Bible. That we've used it many times. We've shared it many times. And you know, very beginning that the world was chaotic and, and uh, after the, the fall of Lucifer, we know that there was chaos uh, in the world and it was dark and it was without form and void and uh, uh, the water covered uh, the world, brother and sister. But then what did God do? God began to talk, brother and sister. God began to speak. And when God began to speak, things began to change. Amen. Things began to change. Not only does have that example, we can come on uh, into, maybe into the Gospels and into the New Testament. And we can see things uh, like Jesus speaking to death. When Lazarus was dead, this man was dead. He had been dead for four days. Okay, His, the sisters even... Uh, uh, Martin even said, "By now he stinks, brother <laughs> sister. He was he's already decaying. His body is already decomposing. But brother sister, it wasn't too late for the Lord. The Lord simply called him by name. He said, Lazarus, come forth. He didn't say dead, come forth, because everybody in that grave would have come out at the command of the Lord." He called him by name. He spoke.
spoke, brother and sister. And when Jesus speaks, things change. Amen. Things change. You know, thank God when Jesus began to deal with our lives, and he began to speak what to us by his word, by the Holy Ghost, however that it was. Maybe someone witnessed to you. Maybe you went to church and you heard the word of God. No doubt God, by the Holy Ghost, began to deal with your heart. Maybe that's what got you to go to church. God, by the Holy Ghost, dealing with your heart to bring you to a place where God could speak to you. And God began to speak. And when you began to listen to God, as Jesus says many times in the word of God, he that have ears to hear, let him hear. When we began to have ears to hear, we began to listen to God. And God began to speak to us. And we heard some good news, didn't we? We heard about Jesus, brother and sister. But not only did we hear we put our faith in what we heard, we acted upon it, we repented, we turned to the Lord, and the Lord did exactly what he said he would do. He changed you and I, and we have been born again of the Spirit of Almighty God. We are new creatures, brother and sister. We're not the men and women that we used to be, because God began to talk to you and I. God began to talk to us. You don't have to stop at salvation. God still talks to his people. As we read to you here of the book of Hebrews, God was talking to their forefathers. God had been talking to people all the way back. From the very beginning, as we shared with you already, look throughout human history. God's trying to talk to people. Here, the apostle Paul is writing to them. Yes, God talked to them. Different people, different times, different ways. But you know what? God's talking, Paul was saying, to us right now. And he's not talking to us by Moses. He's not talking to us by an angel. He's not talking to us by a prophet. God is talking to us by his son. As we've shared with you, who is the creator of all things. Amen. He created everything. Brother and sister, by him. Brother and sister, and he wants to create something in our lives. That's why he's talking to us, because he wants Christ yes, born yes, in yes. you and I. Yes. He wants Christ to be formed in us, brother and sister, by words. Words have been, are very important, aren't they? Words have power. They are significant. Okay? They have meaning. They matter. Brother and sister, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to, sa to save them that believe. God would use words. God uses preaching, brother and sister. Whether it's me up here tonight or someone uh, somewhere else, someone witnessing to someone. There's a lot of personal preaching that goes on. You know, we're talking about filling the church and about others coming. Well, for that to happen, brother and sister, we've got to do more than just invite people on one day out of the week for a couple of hours. We have to be a living, walking, speaking witness for the Lord. Amen. 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 You know, I met a man last night at Walmart. He was buying all these notebooks, and I was just hanging out near the clearance area because I said, I'm going to strike up a conversation with somebody. I'm going to have an opportunity. I want to invite somebody to church. I want to, to, to tell somebody about the Lord. I, I said, man, that's a lot of notebooks. And the man said, oh, I'm starting a, a concrete pouring business. And I said, oh, I know about that. I used to do that when I was a younger man. I said, man, that's hard work. He used to do slabs for houses and churches and, and yeah, buildings and things. And I said, oh, that's some rough work. I, I, I uh, uh, know what you're kind of getting into, but you're still young. He said, well, my dad's the expert. I'm, I, I went to, to college, and I've got some business and some sales experience. And so we're kind of working together. He knows about concrete, and I know about sales. And we're trying to get this thing going. I said, well, you just do a good job, and Amen. you'll get a good reputation and a good name. And that'll that'll be worth it, worth something to you, you know. Uh, and and, and uh, I said, I said, that's, I, I'm glad to see that you're, 
You're trying to improve yourself. I said, but you know what? The, the, the thing that you can really improve yourself on, and I pulled out a church card. I said, you can come to church and let the Lord Amen. work in your life. Amen. That's what we need, brother and sister. Amen. Don't be afraid. Got to help you. We're, we're not to be ashamed, brother and sister. I know this is a little dinky building. I know we got some painted up windows and things like that. It ain't the building. Okay? It's not our prowess in the music endeavor that we have. It is the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. It saved me. It saved you. It will save others. We need to let God talk and we need to let God talk through us. We need to let God talk through us. God wants to talk to people. And yes, God deals with people by the Holy Ghost. And yes, God deals with people when they come and they hear the ministry of the word. But also, God also deals with people through his saints. Yeah. Brother and sister, we need to open our mouth and speak on behalf of the Lord. Words are important. And by words, we know what's in a person's heart, don't we? Out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaketh. Jesus tells us in Matthew 12, chapter 12. Our words can be a blessing. Okay? Or our words can be uh, a curse, brother and sister. That tongue, it's a little mat number, and it boasts us great things. Behold, what a great matter a little fire kindleth. Okay? Our, our tongue can cause a lot of problems, or our tongue can cause a lot of good. Yeah. Well, let's let it cause a lot of good. And then let's let God talk through us. Let our speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. You know, when we're letting God lead us by the Holy Spirit, brother and sister, when we're walking in the Spirit, we're letting God, God lead us by the Spirit. God to help us to say the things that need to be said and need to be heard. And we can do it. When God speaks, brother and sister, things happen. We know, okay? You know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Well, when God speaks, things happen. We talked about the creation already and how, I don't know why this thing is ringing. But anyway, we saw how that, that out of chaos and out of emptiness and out of darkness, God brought light and life. Isn't it that way in our lives, brother and sister? I think we got this. Hey, isn't it that way in our lives? God spoke to that void that we had in our heart. We were empty. We were looking for something to fill that void. Our life was chaotic. But oh, thank God, Jesus came along yes. and said, let there be yes. light. And there was light. Yes. And it is good. Yes. It is good, brother and sister. Not only did he speak into our hearts, brother and sister, but he's, he's spoken in so many different ways, so many different ways he's changed. Brother and sister, the, the, the lives of men and women, we've already given examples tonight. But you know, when God speaks, brother and sister, when God speaks, we need to be willing to listen because it's not always some great, grand thing. You know, I'm reminded of the man who was afflicted with leprosy and and uh, he, if he was told to do some great thing, his servant said, you would have done it. Are you here? Okay. God told him to go dip in the river Jordan. Yes, he did. <laughs> that wasn't good enough for him. But you know when he did it, when he obeyed what God told him, he was healed, brother and sister. Sometimes we want some, we got to have some great big, uh, you know, uh, outward show or something. God doesn't always work that way. Okay? We have the example of Elijah. It was a still, small voice, brother and sister. God spoke to him by a still, small voice. Sometimes it's right in front of us. If we would just listen, God's trying to speak to us. Brother and sister, what is God saying? He is telling you and I, brother and sister, that he has 
grace and mercy and power for you and I, not only for us, but for every human being who will believe and who will put their faith in him. Amen. He's speaking Amen. to us. His actions speak to us. His grace speaks to us. His willingness to die on the cross for you and I speaks to us. Amen. We were enemies. We were alienated by our works, brother and sister. We were separated from God, but we have been reconciled Amen. by the blood of his son, Jesus. Amen. He's proven his love to you and I, just like we do. You know, we do things, and people do things, and it proves love, doesn't it? It proves love. Well, God, God doesn't just talk. God's talk, brother and sister, is backed up by what God does. He gave his sinless son to die upon that cross to die for us, and I'm getting pretty close, sister, sister, right? And Jesus didn't just talk about saving you and I. He didn't just talk about being victorious over sin, over death, over the devil. Brother and sister, he rose from the dead on the third day, didn't he? Yeah. Just like he said. Amen. And he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Was that just words? No, it wasn't. Yes, we need to listen to what he said, but it's more than just words. Just like everything else, he said it is a fact, it is true, it is a reality, and because of that, you and I are to go into the whole world and preach the gospel yes. to every creature. Yes. We're to go into the whole earth, brother and sister, and we are to preach this gospel to every creature. What is he saying to us today? He's saying to us, brother and sister, this voice of God that's talking to you and I, he's telling us, don't listen to the negative voices. Don't listen to fear. Don't listen to doubt. Don't listen to the voice of the world. Listen to the one who called you out of sin yeah. and darkness. It is he and he alone that is going to get you to that eternal life with him that we are hoping for, we are looking for, we are waiting on. We're going to keep listening to Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to keep listening to the Lord, brother and sister, that voice of the Lord, that one that is speaking to our hearts. Let's let God talk tonight. We're going to come and pray. Let's not just come up here, brother and sister, and pass time. But let's come tonight. And let's God, let's let God talk to us tonight. Amen. As we bow our heads and we close our eyes in reverence to the Lord. As our sister begins to play, she begins to sing. We're going to come and pray. Oh, let God talk to you tonight. Let's be like Jesus. Not my will, but thy will be done. As we come and we pray, God bless you tonight as our prayer.